typical day, we, uh, we have the first bakers start to come in about uh, uh, 3 to 4 o'clock in the morning. We take orders up until noon, and then we have to get that stuff made, cooled, sliced, bagged, packaged, and delivered by 6 o'clock in the morning. So it's a real just-in-time uh, type operation. It's, uh, it's really quite a symphony uh, when you get right down to it. I come from a big Italian family, so uh, grandma was always cooking, and uh, uh, the bakery and pastries was always a big part of every meal. I have uh, very fond memories of that. It was in 1978 when we started, and uh, it was a lot like times are right now. It was, hard, it was hard to find a job. I had just graduated from the U of M, and I was looking for work for almost two years. And uh, my dad and I had always talked, we thought it would be fun to have a family business. Well, my dad was looking for something to invest in and I was looking for work. So we found this boarded up bakery, donut shop, and we figured that would be a terrific uh, family business. How are you guys coming on the cookies? As a part of that, there were a lot of nights that we ate cold cereal right. as a family, just because there wasn't much money coming in and it, times were tough. And back then there were a lot of experienced, older, bakeries, uh, Germans and Swedes that were very willing to teach you their craft. And I was very open to it. it. It meant survival for me. So I got a great education. And in 1989, I uh, took the test to become a certified master baker. There's 138 in the United States. And uh, I passed. And it was all because of these old timers teaching me this dying craft. And uh, for me, it was just a matter of I needed to learn these things to produce the products that we needed to produce to survive. We have about 100 employees, a little over 100 employees. Uh, most everything is from scratch, uh, a lot of hand work. It's real old school. Uh, and the more old school we do it, the better the results. Uh, we're trying to turn the clock back in time. Uh, years ago, but when I was younger, in the, uh, the mid-60s, bread used to come wrapped in uh, wax paper. And then the, the big innovation in the early part of the 60s was a plastic bag. I am trying to find a machine that will wrap bread in the uh, wax paper again. I've looked everywhere. I've got feelers out all over the country to, to find an old abandoned machine. And then I'm trying to find somebody to make the wax paper for us. I would love to be able to offer a loaf of bread wrapped in wax paper, the way it was done in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. It's an old, very old profession, and the more we go back to those roots and use simpler ingredients and these simple techniques, uh, the better tasting the stuff is. I get to do a little bit of everything. So I have, um, I have done everything in the bakery, and as general manager, depending on where they need me, is where I go. A temperature, a pull something out 30 seconds too early can make all the difference in a raw product or a fully baked product. You have got to have a very good eye and, and really care about the product you're putting out. And if you don't care enough to let it take that one extra rotation, you know, or that extra five minutes to prove, you're going to end up with a product that's not acceptable. It's, it's always something different. It's always something um, creative and fun. and. Um, um, I like cookies. I like all of our cookies. They're, they're really good at brownies. I like everything. I have a horrible sweet tooth. Um, and it's not a good place to work if you have a sweet tooth because you get to try everything and it's, it's, it's all good. So everyone in my family expects me to bring quite a variety of pastries and cakes and things like that. And I do. <laughs> Treat yourself, it's the holidays. Uh, try some of this stuff that you haven't tried for a while. It's really delicious stuff and some really fun flavors too.